been 24 hours of paralyzing panic. The snow came down all through the night. Drivers stranded in the dark to the province sending out a travel warning urging people to stay home. Vancouver Island, a big dump of snow. A monster winter storm is bearing down across much of this country. There is an extreme cold warning in effect for much of the province tonight, with some spots seeing temperatures drop to minus 50. Sub-zero temperatures have led to record-breaking demand for electricity. More snow and freezing rain is expected. And it's not over yet. Another storm has rolled in, triggering a rare blizzard warning. More snow and strong winds will see the region pummeled again overnight. Tanya Fletcher, CBC News. Vancouver. Hey friend, I am uh, I'm just so pumped right now. I'm currently up on Mount Washington and a uh, winter storm system has been moving all over Vancouver Island, which is just epic because we've had a really lame winter so far, but there's been snow over the entire island right now, which is a little unusual, but really awesome. So even down at our uh, camp home base there, there was snow. So coming up here to elevation, there's just tons of snow coming down. Across the next 24 hours, it's forecasted to snow another 30 centimeters, which is just, that is, I'm so pumped about that. Getting to experience a winter storm like this while living out of the van has just been, a, again, a dream of mine for a long time. So I'm just so giddy with excitement right now. But uh, on the way up here, the van actually performed fantastic. And uh, I've been up here for two nights already. Uh, last night it hit negative 19 degrees, which is the coldest night I've ever spent living in the van. Uh, thankfully, I have a beautiful diesel heater, which has been keeping me like it's, it's ridiculous how cozy and warm it is inside the van. Like, I just feel so luxurious. But uh, um, maybe I should take you inside real quick and kind of talk through what the plan is uh, for spending the week up here on a mountain. Like, <laughs> How awesome is this? I get to spend a week up here. As we come up close to the van though here, you can actually hear the diesel heater kind of just pumping away the exhaust as it just warms up the inside of the van. So these chains here are actually pretty awesome. I just uh, bought them off Amazon after reading some reviews and they've got, uh, they're low profile chains. So uh, there's kind of not tons of clearance in the wheel well here because I've got the bigger tires on. So these guys uh, seem to be doing a very great job and uh, yeah, we've got about six inches or so of fresh snow that we've been driving through up here and some elevated roads and uh, I haven't been slipping around at all. So coming inside here, the cabin vibes are really strong. <laughs> so the diesel heater is in that seat base right there and so this air vent right here is just pumping out hot air. Our coin grip flooring here has actually uh, worked out very fantastic. So we ended up using this coin grip product because it's like a continuous vinyl. So there's no, it's basically one sheet over the whole floor. So that way getting water out of the van is just a simpler process as well as dust and things like that. It's the reason why we didn't do one of those fake hardwood products like vinyl planking or something like that. We still haven't done a proper tour uh, of our van system here. And uh, it's, it's a little bit uh, messy inside right now, but I should, maybe I'll just show you around some of the things we got going on. Um, this is our kitchen cabinet area where we do meal prep and stuff. Our sink is underneath here. This is a cutting board that pulls out in our sink system. Got outlets up there that I'm charging stuff on. 
And then over here on the right side, this is the two person bench seat so we can have extra passengers. And this seat will turn in this direction into those tracks on the floor with integrated seat belts, which is great. This is my desk right here. So there's actually where I'll typically do my work from. So uh, this swivels around on a, a little table arm there and uh, I've got outlets all behind there so I can keep powering my laptop and stuff like that. But sitting at this seat doing work on my laptop, this is kind of where my typical workstation ends up being. Um, down over here, we've got our fridge. This right here is my camera drawer. Most of my camera gear is out right now being used. Um, the camera that I was using to film those outside segments is now completely fogged because I brought it inside. But I have this funny little uh, snow hood on it so that way snow wasn't getting on the lens. Two overhead cupboards, main overhead storage right here, Bluetooth speaker for pumping some tunes. Moving to the back, this is the bed whole area. This is wardrobe all down the side with electrical cabinet right in here. So this is how I can see our power systems and how we're doing. And then this bench right here actually flips up to lengthen our bed. So these legs on the side right here pop down. So that's the bed right now at its full length, which is like six and a half feet. But then if you push this up, it gives you some access to our garage area down in there. Uh, usually the snow gear is all in there, but currently a lot of my snow gear is up on our bed. And then this section also flips up and that's where we've got our toilet, uh, some canned goods. Usually this is stocked way more full of food. And uh, I usually put my camera bags down in there if we're gonna leave the van for a while. So it's currently actually around, um, I think it's negative 10 right now outside. Uh, but inside the van here, it's 17 degrees. So I, I actually am getting pretty warm. So maybe it's time to just turn the heater off for now. Um, this is the first trip where it's kind of like a full on test of all the winter systems and workflows. Cause uh, I don't have tons of experience camping in a vehicle in the winter. And so actually being up here is a good kind of trial run and see how everything goes. And uh, the diesel heater, like uh, this is the first time where I actually need it. So if the diesel heater kicks off at nighttime, I'll be fine inside the van here. Like I'll, uh, it's not like I'm gonna die in the van, um, but it'll just get kind of uncomfortable. So it's kind of one of those things where I'm hoping all the systems actually do work under stress. Cause we're normally, uh, when we're just down at uh, normal temperatures, it will kick on for a little bit to warm it up and then turn off. Um, so this is kind of one of the first trial runs where I've just been continuously running the heater when it is on for hours and hours and hours at a time. But now that we have a fully insulated build with cedar everywhere, um, yeah, again, I'm just, I'm so grateful for this van and uh, being able to call it home for now is just, uh, it's pretty special. If you have more questions about our van build, uh, you can definitely uh, watch the full van build series because we made videos about self-converting this whole process. I'd never built something like this before, so it was uh, quite an undertaking for me, but we documented the whole thing and um, tried to incorporate some fun little features like slide out uh, countertops here and stuff like that and just make it personal to us. But uh, some point in the future, I will do a proper filmed van tour and uh, make it all all cinematic and stuff like that but uh, I just wanted to give you a brief look around here if you have any suggestions of like winter camping workflows or things like that I'd love to hear them it would be cool I saw this video actually YouTube recommended me a video of a guy who took his Westphalia up to Mount Baker which is actually uh, not that far from where uh, we used to live before we came to Vancouver Island. That was the ski hill that I actually went to a bunch there. And he took his Westvalia up and he had this whole like winter system with a, a fireplace and stuff. I'll make sure to link his video down below. And it's, it's, a, it's just a fascinating video. Watch the guy just talk through, you know, what he does in the winter. And so if you have any suggestions of things like what he does for me in the comments, uh, I'd love to hear them because uh, again, I'm pretty new to the winter camping stuff. Um, I'm not gonna head up on the resort today. I did yesterday, I got some good turns in. The snow wasn't so amazing yesterday because there wasn't fresh snow. Um, but now that uh, fresh stuff is coming down, I'm just pumped. So my plan right now is to get my touring gear ready and there's this lower meadows area here in Strathcona Park. So kind of just 
there's a lot of snowshoeing that happens uh, down and through that area. So what I'm gonna do right now is just uh, gear up, get my touring set up ready to go, and just uh, kind of slough through some of the lower flat trails here just to get my uh, blood pumping and uh, also do some more test runs with my touring setup, so. Well, I've been uh, slogging around here for the last uh, hour and 15 minutes. Uh, in the past 15 minutes or so, I kind of made my way up this hillside. This area looks like there could be a lot of fun tree lines up in the hillside there, but I don't have a partner with me, so I'm not really gonna go off trail today. What a lovely afternoon. Kind of winding down here for the day, uh, getting things ready for tomorrow, getting all the gear laid out so it can dry, charging all the batteries and things like that. This is what things normally look like when I'm just getting all the gear laid out to charge and just make sure uh, all the batteries are accounted for. It's not the cleanest system. Um, I technically left this area right here, is supposed to have cupboards there, but we never got to finishing it. And that cupboard system is supposed to be my charging area, but uh, we're currently doing that right here instead. And then I've been importing footage down at my laptop here. This is my drying area down here, trying to get the gloves and boots dry for tomorrow, right by the heater there. snow out there right now and I'm just fired up with excitement. This is definitely shaped up to be the storm of the winter. So I actually won't be skiing alone out there today. I'm gonna to be meeting up with uh, some friends. So my wife works with an outdoor leadership program. So there's about 20-ish students up here all crammed into a chalet together with the leaders uh, and I'm gonna meet up with them on the slopes and hopefully catch some sweet runs together. Getting ready for first chair of the day. Look who it is. Oh, dude, so stoked. We got a five foot base and five inches of freshy on top. Five foot base with five inches of freshy on top. So stoked. I'm stoked. Are you stoked? We're stoked. So stoked. <laughs> Let's go. This is going to be a sick day. <laughs> so I'm so excited. Everyone's just, just grinning. It's gonna be so good. Here we go, first chair of the day. Woo. Is everybody stoked or what?
That's my getting stuck in waist deep pal in the first run. That was pretty beautiful. Snow report. Snow report. All right, snow report is still a lot of pow, and now it's blue skies and really sunny. Remember to use your beard to stay hydrated. So something else I haven't explained yet because getting you all caught up to date with the details of my life uh, can get a little complicated, but the outdoor program that Janelle's working with and the people that I'm skiing with today, uh, her partner running that program, the leader of that program is actually my brother-in-law, Corey. Hey, hello. <laughs> Plot thickened. Your Plot. life just got a whole lot more interesting. <laughs> like and subscribe for more content. <laughs> I think the last time that Corey was in a video might have been your bachelor party. That, there was one time we went for sushi. Uh, and you may have caught my back. Oh. <laughs> Maybe. So this is my brother-in-law, Corey. And then down over here, my sister, uh, she married that guy. And so she's up here as well skiing. So it's a whole family unit. And I haven't even explained yet that uh, my younger brother is actually a student in the program this year. So if that doesn't get overwhelming and hard to understand, then, then great. I guess you understand what my life looks like right now. This What's is my up, bros. Bro? This is James. How was your day, James? Good. It was your birthday yesterday? Yeah. Up top? <laughs> what a beauty afternoon up here. Last run of the day. After a long day of skiing yesterday, um, I slept amazing last night. Like, the best sleep I've had in a long time. Today is now Friday. Uh, I've been up on Mount Washington since Monday, so that's five days of winter camping up here, uh, experiencing probably one of the biggest winter storms uh, I've been through on the island so far. But I thought it'd be fun to head inside and uh, talk through how did the van do and what were some of the things that I learned while being up here. There's tons of wind two nights ago and lots of sun, so all the snow that was on these trees earlier in this week is now all gone. Uh, there's still some snow left on the top of the van, but I almost wish that I hadn't driven around at all when we were here because it would have been cool to see how much snow had accumulated while we were up here. I think, first of all, just having an insulated van is a game changer. So this is, uh, I'm really glad that we spent the time doing the insulation that we did uh, earlier when we were building this because it works really well. Even when the heater was off, uh, the, the heat would actually stay inside the van 
pretty well. Uh, that being said, if we were going to do long-term winter camping, we're definitely having like uh, insulated covering. So we've got a thin slate covering on this window here to my left. Uh, but for the front windows, we didn't have anything. So our curtain does help hold some of the heat over here, but it's not... It's not tons. It just kind of gets rid of some of that drafty feeling because on the other side of a window in temperatures like this, it's actually quite a cold pocket of air there almost at all times. So having the curtain up kind of prevented some of that cold air from just circulating and making it feel like there was a draft happening in here. But I think just having some of those nice window covers would have been a, a pretty helpful addition. The heater, that's like, it's living in luxury. Like I just can't get over how awesome having a heater is. Uh, I wasn't cold in here once and coming in after the ski day, taking off my gear. It's a very dry heat that's coming out of this heater. So the, the floor would dry out, the, the wet snow gear would dry out. I put a little drying rack in front. So yesterday the temperatures came up to like negative three, negative four-ish at various different times. And uh, when I came back to the van, I think I had the heater set at like negative uh, positive 16 degrees. 16 degrees is what I had the heater set at. And when I came back in here and was taking all my gear off, it was it was warm in here and the heater wasn't cycling on on full all the time. It was actually cycling all the way off at various different times because it was able to keep the ambient temperature up in here. So just from like some rough experience things now with this heater, because I've only had it running up in the snow here for a week now. Uh, but when it's like negative 10 and below to keep it at nice room temperature, it's cranking on hot basically the whole time. But when you get to like negative five, negative three, kind of that area, the, the heater doesn't need to work as hard to keep the temperature up. So that's kind of just a nice little thing to know as far as how hard like I'm wondering how much more we can get out of the heater on how much colder it will get. Uh, and that's obviously just based off the quality of our build because it's putting out a lot of heat. So, it, I mean, we can maybe go down to negative 30, but that might be pushing it. Um, again, that's in Celsius. Oh, oh the battery. So that, that's what I wanted to talk about as well. Uh, our Battleborn 400 amp hour lithium ion bank it just came in so clutch on this trip. Uh, the reason why we have a bank like that is for a trip like this. Uh, in the summer times, we sometimes use it to like heat hot water for a shower. Uh, I don't see myself doing tons of sh shower. The shower system wouldn't really work in temperatures like this because it's an outdoor shower, but using the hot water kettle, using various different charging accessories, and then also keeping the van heated the whole time by running the heater obviously the heater is getting its fuel from diesel but it's still running it's pulling it's pulling amps continually um the fridge is running the whole time basically what i like my rough estimation is that we were using uh 20 to 25 percent per day so that means the first four days uh just continually with no external power of any kind no alternator charging no solar panels uh we were getting four days out of the battery bank completely unplugged from anything which is really rad if we wanted to extend that uh, i could have been clearing off the solar panels uh, once it started getting sunny but truthfully for me i just wanted to see uh, if I was being semi-conservative with power, how long can I stretch it out when we're living in sub negative 10 degrees uh, through the night, uh, multiple nights in a row? So knowing that we've got at least four days in this, and I probably could have squeezed out a fifth day if I wasn't charging as many camera batteries. Um, and then, so what do I do when the battery bank runs out? Uh, either clear off the solar panels because we've got a 750 watts on the roof. So if it's cloudy out the whole time and I can't get any charge off the solar panels, I have my little Honda 2K generator, which is a fantastic. Uh, that's actually what I invested in before I did any of the electrical system because you literally just put gasoline in it and you get power. So some of my previous camping trips where it got below zero, I was using the generator to do one of those little space heaters. Uh, definitely not as luxurious as this, but it does uh, work in a pinch. But that generator could charge up our battery bank system if we're in clouds and I don't have shore power. On, on this trip, what I did is I just uh, went and hung out at the chalet for a little bit with Janelle's work and uh, all the students that were there and plugged in the van and it uh, got it charged up pretty quickly. But uh, other than that, I would just make sure I'm at a camping spot that has an outlet if I'm gonna be out longer than five days. But again, like four days, five days, completely unplugged, coming back to civilization or coming back, paying for one night at a campground to get power or running the generator for eight hours. I mean, that's a pretty sweet way to kind of get all the systems back up and going. I don't know if there's any other systems that I should try talk through right now. I think this is 
Our trip to Alaska this summer was a fantastic use case for the van, but it didn't really stress test uh, it as a winter camping vehicle. And so I had some nervous excitement coming into this trip because I wanna do more stuff like this. I, I really do love winter. And uh, in the past five years or so, I haven't gotten to the mountains as much as I did as a teenager, just because because I work a lot. So now being able to have my office on the road with me in this cabin on wheels, uh, it, it's really special so I was doing some work here on my laptop in the evenings and the whole time I just I was so giddy of, of how I, I just can't believe that we this is our van uh, uh, last year was there's a lot of work that went into making this happen but actually being up here with this uh, makes me pretty excited <laughs> One of the things I forgot to address there was uh, driving performance in the snow. Uh, in the past, driving this van in the snow has uh, been a not so fun experience. Um, primarily because the van was so light with our previous uh, van build conversion, the weight over the back tires was pretty much non-existent. So this thing was slipping around all over the place. Uh, but now that we've got the build inside, there's a lot more uh, proper weight over that rear axle. And getting those chains on was just insane. Like the chains worked so well, which I probably should have known because that's what chains are supposed to do. But in my lifetime, I haven't spent tons of time driving around with chains because most of the vehicles uh, that I've had when it's snowy, we put on winter tires. So the chains, I'm just thrilled by that. It almost gave me a false sense of confidence. Uh, driving around in the evening when the snow was coming down, I, I had to move from some parking lots because snow machines. There was roads I was driving over where it was over a foot deep in snow and the last tracks had not been for a while. And I don't think that came through on the little iPhone clips that I was doing on the road. And I was too nervous to go set up a tripod to actually get a driving shot. But uh, man, those chains I got are fantastic. This is beautiful. There is so much snow. I just stopped by the main office here to pick up a package. The lodge looks beautiful. <laughs> there's a uh, there's snow everywhere here. Okay, so uh, what I've got here in this box is some parts for setting up, or more efficiently setting up rather, uh, kind of my internal studio lighting setup that I've been doing in the van when I film tutorials. I went from like a full on proper studio down to just this van, so I'm excited to make a video about how I've been making this space work for that. Uh, this is a little extender ball mount, so that way I can make, it's basically like Lego for camera gear, but these NATO connectors here are actually really efficient for um, connecting to fixed areas on the van. In this ball head system here, it's a little bit of an investment for each one of these pieces, but uh, it's very well made. So right on small rig. So down there on the dash right there, I've got a NATO rail. And then up here on the ceiling, I have another NATO rail. This rail on the ceiling was primarily for holding a fan uh, in the summer, just because the air conditioning and airflow in the van isn't that great. So as we come and tighten this down, basically there, we've got a fixed point to mount from, and we can basically configure this arm however we want. So you can start to see how useful this stuff is when using it kind of like a Lego setup. So right now I actually had the camera mounted on this tripod, but I'm gonna mount it from the ceiling now. Boom, just like that. Let's take this down. Just like that, we got a camera set up uh, from the ceiling, which is uh, really rad. And again, the reason why I didn't like settle in on all these points at the beginning of building the van was because I really wasn't sure what configuration I was gonna enjoy using most. So I didn't wanna go ahead and put all these mounts everywhere. So that's why I only started with two but now we're gonna expand a lot more. Maybe down by the bed there, I'm gonna put one so that way we can watch, uh, put an iPad in and watch a movie or something like that. So this is, uh, this is very exciting. That's gonna be it for this uh, snowy storm adventure. We're back at the home base. I'm still unsure what other things I'm gonna get up to this winter. Uh, I'm thrilled that the van works so well through that storm. I think I'm gonna remember this, this trip that I just went on for the rest of my life. Um, 
which is uh, kind of special when you're making memories like that. So thank you so much for following along in the adventure. I'd love to have you stick around for future videos, but that's going to be it for this one. So remember, life's better when you make stuff. Peace.